For this next video, I've jumped over to InDesign and I've just created a generic document. It doesn't matter what the settings are as long as you have a document to work with. We're talking about the Pages panel, so I want to open the Pages panel. If you're using any workspace, the Pages panel should be hanging out over here on the far right hand side with your pages and you can click on it to open it. You can even click and drag the little tab to undock it so that we're working on it all by itself. If for some reason your workspace is not set or the pages panel is missing, don't forget you can always go to the window menu, choose workspace, and then you can reset your workspace to whatever the default would be for that workspace. Or you can even choose window and then just specifically choose pages, and then you can open the pages panel. However you would like to do that, I would like you to launch the pages panel. We're going to practice adding pages so that we can have pages to work with. There are a number of ways to add pages, but for now, I would like to focus on using the new page button at the bottom of your pages panel. And I'm going to click that seven times so that I have eight pages within my document. From here, I want to review the things that we've already covered in the lecture. So we need to be able to open the pages panel. We need to identify the master page section versus the regular page section of the pages panel. And you can see that if I grab this horizontal bar and I drag it up or down, I can see more of that master page area or less of the actual pages. In the bottom right hand corner, if you grab the panel, you can make it wider or you can make it taller so that you see all of your pages. The top half above that light gray bar are the master page section. By default, all documents that you create in InDesign will have one master. It'll be called the A master and it will be a two page master. Everything else below the gray line are your actual pages. And so until we learn how to use master pages, really the only part of the panel I'm concerned about is the bottom half, pages one through eight. If I design something on page five, it should show up on page five. When you start to work with multiple pages in InDesign, it is very important that you know what page you're on. So if I was to click right now on page three, and we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see this page, and then I want to add something. And so I'm just gonna add a big circle so that you can see when it's added to the page. Let's give it a fill color. I clicked on page three, and I thought I was editing page three, but because I did not actually navigate to page three, I happened to be on page eight, and so that circle that I created ended up being on page eight. I'm going to switch to my selection tool and cut this. So I'm gonna do edit cut or command or control X. If I want that blue circle to be on page three, I have to double click that page. It will navigate to page three, and then when I paste this, it will appear on page three. And so there's a number of different ways to navigate from page to page. The easiest way is to always double click, to double check, triple check, quadruple check that you're on the page that you think you're navigating to. The Pages panel has an option flyout menu. The option flyout menu is the little button in the top right hand corner of any panel that has four horizontal lines, and it gives you more options than what you're seeing in a default panel. And so the settings that I would like you to focus on for now are insert pages. If I wanted to add 400 pages to this document, I could choose insert pages, and I would get a little prompt or dialog box that will allow me to say, I wanna add 400 pages, and I wanna insert them after page eight or after page six or before page five or I don't know how many pages are in my document so how about just at the end of the document. You can also create new master pages and so I have a default master page that has two pages but maybe I want a one page master. If we hit the option fly out menu and choose new master you'll get a dialog box that will allow you to create a new master. We'll leave it as B master make it one page. You can see that when I did that, it added another option to the top half of my pages panel. And so now I have two masters. I have an A master that is two pages or a spread, and I have a B master that's just one page. You can also do a number of things for master pages, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because we'll have a separate lecture all about master pages. But you can save your master page, you can load master page, you can select unused master pages, and do things like that. What I would like you to focus on are the page attributes. There are some fun things that you can do in there. So if you go to page attributes, you'll see that there's a color label option, a rotate spread view, page transitions, and spread flattening. I'm going to double click on any one page. It doesn't matter, just choose a page. I chose page four. 
If we come to the Option File menu and choose Page Attributes and Color Label, you can choose one of these colors here. I'll choose Violet for now. And you can see that it added a color label to your page. And you can decide what that means. I like it as a visual cue. I'm a very visual person. That's the page I'm working on. That's the page I want you to look at. That kind of thing. I also like red for something's not right and needs to be fixed. And green, everything is good to go. So I'm going to make sure that I'm still on page four by double clicking on it. The next option is rotate spread view. So sometimes you're designing a project that's in one orientation, let's say it's in portrait orientation, but for whatever reason, whatever's on your page has to be rotated 90 degrees. It's a chart or it's a map or of some sort. It's really hard to work on something and design it sideways. And so what you can do is you can rotate the spread view. I'm going to rotate it, let's say 90 degrees clockwise. And then if I zoom out, you can see that that spread has now been rotated 90 degrees. If I zoom in on that, it allows me to do spot editing. So I could say I need to put a chart on this page. So I make a text box to make a table. With my text cursor blinking, I'm going to choose table and insert table. And then I'm going to make it have, let's say, 25 rows and 7 columns. And now, as I start to work on this chart, etc. I can design it so it's right reading for me as I design, but then I can go back to the option file menu, choose page attributes, rotate spread view, and I can rotate it back. So I can either rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, which would put it back to where it needs to go, or I'm just going to hit clear rotation. And so now when I look at the design in its final layout, the user is going to have to rotate the book they're holding, and they're going to have to turn it to the side to read the chart, but I don't have to turn my head to the side as I'm designing that page. The last thing I would like you to look at are page transitions. So if you hit the option file out menu, choose page attributes and then page transitions. If you choose, you can choose a page transition. So you can say that I want to have the comb page transition and you can do it on just one page or all page. I'm going to leave it on all spreads or all pages. And when you do that, if you look at your pages panel, an icon appears to the right of your spread that indicates that there has been a page transition applied to that spread. What happens when you apply a page transition and then you export your document um, to a digital format is that when you move from one page to the next, the page will transition using the box transition. Notice how when I put my project into full screen mode in InDesign, nothing really happens. InDesign is not the output vessel for your digital project. But if I was to, let's say, export this project, file export, to an interactive PDF, a print PDF is a print document, so it's not going to have page transitions. But an interactive PDF is meant to be a digital output. And so if I export this, I'll just toss it on the desktop for now, and I save it. If I launch it and I open it in Adobe Acrobat or a PDF viewer application that allows for page transitions, when I transition from one page to the next, you can see that the page transitions, the comb that I had chosen, will appear when flipping from page to page, or in my case, from spread to spread, because my document has spreads.